Tacoma Parasitic Draw. It's a thing. Cold start. Whoa, listen to that beeping. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you today? So, apparently, parasitic draw is something that you need to be concerned with, especially if you are a modder doing anything really electrical to your Toyota Tacoma. That means like adding lights, adding accessory switches, you know, like in my case, anything that might draw power from the Tacoma, or the battery rather, in the background or when the truck is not running. You know, there's already several parasitic systems uh, that are on the Toyota Tacoma now. You know, for instance, the security system, when you lock it up, it's armed, it's constantly watching, being vigilant to make sure nobody steals your Tacoma. Uh, the clock, even though it's very, very minor, it is drawing some level of power uh, to be able to keep the time correctly. And there are other systems as well. You know, if you've ever been in your garage and the truck is off and you hear the pump kick on, you know, to equalize the pressure in the tank, that's another parasitic system, right? I mean, it has to have power to do that. The truck isn't running, so it's drawing voltage or current from your battery to operate that pump. That's a parasitic electrical draw, I guess. Anything that pulls power from your battery when the truck isn't running. Now, recently, of course, I had a problem with my Tacoma, went out to start it, turned the key, got the old click, 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 because it didn't have enough charge to start the truck. And that's because I had added a parasitic electrical draw to my Toyota Tacoma system. By the way, I wanna thank, I don't remember, whoever told me that term or commented with that term the other day. I really like that, a parasitic draw. I don't know, it just has a ring to it. It's not a good thing though. So anyway, I went out to get my truck, it wouldn't start. And I was aware of this and when I set the accessory wireless controller up, you had the option to be able to either wire it directly or run another wire to the uh, ignition or something triggered by the ignition so that that unit was only active when the truck was running. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to screw with an add a fuse. So I, I really took the lazy way out. I just connected it directly to the battery and created a parasitic draw. Now, since then, of course, I have changed that. Uh, I did run the, uh, the wiring. If you guys saw the video, I put a video out about that, but I did run a wire uh, to the battery, um, or not to the battery, rather, to the fuse box, to a circuit that is only on, at least primarily, uh, when the Tacoma is running. And by the way, there really are no dead circuits in the uh, fuse box, at least the one under the hood, for the Toyota Tacoma. They're all active. You know, there are a couple that only kick on every so many hours to run tests or whatever the truck does. Kind of has a brain of its own. But there's really no dead circuit that when the truck is off, um, it's off and it does not come on unless you start the truck. At least none that I've ever been able to find. And I had run a tester um, across the whole panel, every fuse, and could never get one that was completely off. So just to be aware. So you kind of have to be conscious of that, I guess, when you're adding mods to your Tacoma, right? If you're doing anything electrical, you got to make sure that you're not hooking something up that's going to sit in the background when the truck isn't running and drain your battery. You know, it would have been a real uh, drag for me had I been out somewhere and gone out to start the truck and it wouldn't start because of what I did. I mean, it is my fault. I take full responsibility for it had absolutely nothing to do with the, the Toyota Tacoma itself. Um, but you have to be careful anyway. When you're messing around with electrical stuff on your truck, you have to be very careful because you can cause problems, right? Let me tell you a little story. You know, several years ago, a, long, a lifetime ago almost, uh, I had a friend who bought a new, uh, I think it was a Ford Escort. 
If any, if any of you remember those, it was Ford's little economy car, cheap car, but got you from place to place, right? And he wanted to put a radio in it. When he bought it, it didn't have a radio, uh, probably because it was so cheap. I mean, it was like next to nothing in this car compared to today. So anyway, he bought one without a radio and we were gonna add a radio to it. I was gonna help him do it, that was the plan. So he gets his radio and we go ahead and, and we put it in. And we started up and it started smoking. Uh, because we had done something wrong, I don't know. And those were back in the days, at least my early days of messing with anything, where I was always in a hurry. I wasn't really uh, paying much attention to what what I was doing. It's like, hook it up, if it turns on, it must be right. Well, in this case, it was not right. It was smoking. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, it did blow a fuse. Uh, and whatever fuse it blew, I don't remember. It must have been some sort of an ignition fuse, I don't know. But the car would not start after that, until we replaced the fuse. We did replace the fuse and the car started, but man, you want to talk about another one of those biting on foil moments. Nothing worse than you're helping a buddy do something and uh, it potentially destroys a brand new vehicle or at least something that would cost a lot of money to fix as far as the electrical system goes. Uh, didn't matter. He uh, actually had that car <laughs> repossessed uh, not long after that. So I don't know, you know, if the next person that got it had any ongoing problems. Uh, hopefully not. That's, that's kind of one of the things that you run into with used cars, right? Here you had these two guys who really didn't know what they were doing, messing around with the electrical system. The car gets repoed. Uh, and then ultimately, I'm sure they sold that car either at auction or outright, I don't know, to somebody else who may very well have bought a car that had ongoing electrical problems because of something that we did. I don't know. Lesson learned anyway. I think after that, and it still sticks in my head today, you know, it's been, like I said, a lifetime ago. I mean, many, many years. Uh, but every time I do something electrical, I got to say, the memory of that pops in my head, you know, and kind of reminds me to be careful of what I'm doing, or at least aware of what I'm doing, which I was with this parasitic drain um, on the battery. I knew what would happen. It, it mentioned in the instructions that it possibly could cause your battery to discharge or drain uh, to the point where your vehicle wouldn't start. So I did it at my own risk. I figured that uh, it couldn't be that much of a drain. The directions did say that it wouldn't drain any more than uh, what the locking mechanism is on your on your truck. So I don't know. Anyway, uh, you just have to be careful. As far as my truck, it's been about a week or so or a few days since I uh, changed the wiring setup, trickle charged the truck, took it out for a ride. Um, I've spent several hours in it since then trying to make sure that it's charged up correctly. And by the way, is there a place, maybe you guys know, I looked, I didn't spend hours looking, but I looked, I didn't see any uh, voltage indicator or way to measure the battery in the Tacoma. Is there a way to do that? I'm just missing out. Leave a comment and let me know about that. But my truck is okay. I think it's fine. One thing I wanted to mention real quick, people have talked about the OEM batteries. They're, they're not as strong, they're not good, they're bad. You know, I've mentioned before on the channel, I've had 60 some vehicles, brand new vehicles, and I have never once in any one of those vehicles had problems with the battery. So I don't know why people feel that way. I think sometimes people think that, you know, the OEM or the manufacturer always uses cheap or inferior things in their vehicles. I don't buy that. Never had any troubles with mine and everything is okay right now. Leave a comment, let me know. Do you have any electrical installation horror stories on your vehicles? You ever done anything that maybe you went oops and it was a problem? I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, if you're interested, check out my other channel. It is Rob Motive JT all about my 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, 
smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.